This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Well, thank you very much and welcome to our board meeting tonight. We start out with recognition tonight, recognition for our school board, for each of our individual board members and their work. And it's my pleasure to just start by saying thank you. Thank you for your commitment to the work, to the service here in the district, to making sure that you are doing everything you can to support every child every day in every way. I'm not sure if everybody realizes this, but our school board members are volunteers. I know you probably realize they are getting a huge paycheck for this and things like that, but no, they are volunteers who give six to eight hours on average at least a week to this work and spend a considerable amount of time um, outside of these meetings, preparing for meetings, attending meetings uh, for other committees, uh, countywide work to really support our students here in Brighton and to advocate on behalf of our community. Uh, we appreciate that so much. This idea, this um, kind of last bastion, if you will, of true representative democracy is so interesting to me. And if you think about back to the beginning of school systems and uh, frankly, colonial school systems, so to speak, where <coughs> small towns, villages chose a traveling teacher and they chose a group of people to tell that traveling teacher what to do with their kids, what to teach them in that one room schoolhouse, how much coal to buy, uh, how much wood to put in the in the furnace and how much ink to buy. Fortunately, they don't get into quite that micro these days, but uh, there is that conversation representing each of you as members of the community in making sure we're doing the right things for kids and helping us understand what you as a community want for your children. And that continues today. So right from that very beginning of time, Horace Mann and the Common School Movement, to now it still works the same way, which I think is pretty amazing, particularly since this is also the last place you directly vote on a tax that impacts you and directly vote for people who are on a daily basis talking about what you want for your kids from a governmental perspective and then helping to develop policy to make that happen each day in school. Um, quick uh, history, uh, if, if you will, 1638, the first schoolmaster uh, came to New York from Holland to take charge of a school in the new Dutch colony of New Amsterdam. In the 1790s and early 1800s, New York State passed laws establishing school districts and empowering citizens to elect school boards to levy taxes. This is where this all came from. Our current budget vote day owes its history to the 1790s and 1800s. 1837, it wasn't until 1837 when the first superintendent came around in Buffalo. And 1854, uh, a State Department of Public Education was created and a superintendent for the state. Jesse Newland articulated the need to separate board's functions from administrators with the board as a legislative body representing the people and the superintendent as their executive. This was officially in law in 1933. So with this history in mind, we thank you for that service and for the service of the school boards representing 700 school districts across the state of New York. And to that end, the governor, our governor Andrew Cuomo, proclaimed whereas each year school board recognition week is observed by the more than 700 school boards and school districts throughout the Empire State and whereas our state's public education system is designed to meet the educational needs of all children to empower them to become competent, productive contributors to society in an ever-changing world and whereas members of local school boards are dedicated to children, learning and community and devote many hours of service to elementary and secondary public education as they continually strive for improvement, excellence and progress in education recognizing that all children can be successful learners, especially when education is tailored to the individual needs of the child. And whereas local school board members are strong advocates for public education and are responsible, I'm sorry, strong advocates for public education and are responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the public and the public's expectations to the district by working closely with parents, educational professionals, and other community members to create the educational vision we all hold for today's students and those in the future. And whereas the members of New York's local school boards respond to the educational needs of communities that serve and help ensure the solid foundation of our school system. In doing so, these leaders help strengthen our state's educational mm -hmm. system and improve future prospects for our children. And whereas during the week of October 21st through 25th, or we're special in advance here in Brighton, so this particular week, special activities and programs will be held in communities across New York State in observance of School Board Recognition Week, and is fitting to join in acknowledging the commitment and contributions of members of local school boards now, therefore, I, Andrew Cuomo, Governor of the State of New York, do hereby proclaim October a school board recognition month for this particular week. So I join the governor also in uh, congratulating you. That's a pretty comp uh, comprehensive description of what you do. At the end of the day, you do this. You do the work behind this. You make sure we have what we need for kids to be able to perform at such a high level in so many ways. 
Japan the greatest gift I think that we can give you in recognition that work is performance is from our kids and our kids will spend some time with you tonight doing that. And we also have a gift for you. Uh, we'd love for at least one of you to open it up right now so we can show it to the community. An artist, Sarah Frischman, graduate, uh, Brighton High School, class of 2019, contributed this uh, wonderful work. A great example of our kids and the way their talents are nurtured thanks to your support. The pieces of art from our students that have become a tradition in the last few years as gifts are just incredible. And I know I speak for all of us and say to thank you so much to our teachers, but to our students who all submit work and to this particular individual, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Well, thanks very much to you. Uh, I know that there will be a few more words of thanks from our PTSA president and our Brain Teacher Association president after our performances from kids, but again, Great. I thank you, and I thank all of you for coming and bringing your kids tonight, because that really is, I think, the greatest gift that we can recognize our school board with. So it is the best part, the absolutely. Dr. Lehner. Thank you, Dr. McGowan, and I'd like to add my thanks as well um, to all of you on the board for your Uncount, uncounted hours that you put in to support the programs uh, that our community has to offer, including uh, those in the visual and performing arts. Uh, I'm humbled to be the one that gets to stand up here and speak with you tonight. Uh, and I'll start off tonight with uh, just our a list of our performances. We're going to start out with a, a video presentation uh, from Ms. Button, who is also going to give her thanks as well, and her students from second grade. Uh, and then we have three live performances for you, uh, one from each of the buildings at French Road, TCMS, and at BHS. Uh, this is the most nervous moment, by the way, for me because I put this on YouTube, and so I'm waiting for the ads to pop up, but I believe I have it coded pro properly to not be interrupted uh, by any advertisements. So uh, let's start off the thank yous tonight uh, with, a, with a thank you from our second graders and from Miss Button uh, at Council Rock. Lisa Button here, music teacher at Council Rock. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Board of Ed for all of your support with our music program. Our children have such a fantastic experience, and it's in large part to all the support that we get from you. So I wanted to take a moment to say thank you and to show you an example of some of the work we do here. At the end of last year, our second graders put together a program for the last day of school and you're going to get to see them sing part of one of the songs that they worked on. And it was such a great experience and I was so proud of their work that I wanted to take a moment to share that with you. So enjoy and thank you once again.
So thank you for taking their hand and thank you for your leadership and for your support. Our next group is from French Road. I believe we have a euphonium trio, yes? And uh, this group is led by Ms. Claire DeFelice who will introduce uh, each of our young musicians that are about to perform. No, it's fine. That was by me. the Council Rock Singers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, accompanied by there them. Go. It's going to be a quartet um, um, because one student, Kira Fillmore, I want to recognize she's not here tonight, um, so I'll be covering her part. But um, as Dr. Lehner said, my name is Claire DeFelice, and I am one of the instrumental music teachers at French Road. And I have a fifth grade baritone in the phonium group tonight. We have Jane Berger, Megan Mendler, and Nathan Bondi and we will be performing an arrangement of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Hope you enjoy it. Next group is from TCMS, a chamber orchestra group uh, led by Ms. Jenny Mull. Thank you. 
Quick little set change, and we'll have my cappella. So I'm excited. I think Ben is in the group the last time, right? Um, so I, I, I bring an a cappella group to sing for you almost every year. And I think um, it's kind of like one of those desserts that you your kids think you're eating chocolate cake, but it actually has like avocado and spinach and stuff in it. That's kind of our a cappella groups, right? Because they take what we do in the classroom and then elevate it even more. So our audience gets to hear pop music, but they've arranged it and rehearsed it and, and taken it to such a high level. So such a great community ambassador group where we can sing for our little ones and our senior citizens and everybody in between. So thanks for having them. Let's curve it up, guys. Jess? <laughs> <laughs> 
Alright. Hi, we're Macapella, one of Brighton High School's nine vocal groups. Um, thank you very much for having us here and for your support. It means a lot to us and it is such an honor for us to sing with this group. Today we will be singing American Boy by Estelle featuring Kanye West. And we don't have Estelle or Kanye, but we do have someone better. We have Carlina Zebuck of the Baronets. Please enjoy. Oh, man. 
another fantastic, another great performance, and uh, 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 just a tremendous array of, of uh, performers every year. A little different; you're never quite sure, but it's always so fantastic. So thanks to all the groups that, that have done that. And you know, I, I, Julene pointed out something to me, and I'm, it's a little off script, but either Bill or Mia, if you could pan behind me. Um, one of the things that makes us very, very unique here in our boardroom is the student artwork that we display. And since we're talking about and celebrating tonight as part of board recognition, our visual and performing arts program and students, we've recently changed the artwork around in the, in the room here, and we display thanks to all of our teachers and the students that create, and sometimes our adults who create, we, create, we have board work on display now nearly year-round in the boardroom here. And it's just such a treat for all of us that use this room. And when we come in and we notice that things have tur turned around and we've got all new displayed art, it gives us a whole new opportunity to check each range out and find the different grades and the different uh, uh, sort of uh, themes displayed and the projects displayed. So it's just, I think, this room, which is just truly unique in boardrooms, I can tell you, around Monroe County, but speaks to, along with those performers that we saw tonight the commitment to the district the in, in, in not only from the board but from all of us on staff and our parents and our community to the value of the visual and performing arts in a, in a student's education so we certainly give thanks to everyone involved in all of that so back to i think you said it so well i know that our music facilitators debbie parker and mike schuzik are here too as are several of the staff members so thank you for that um you know, their parents make it happen, the kids certainly make it happen, but the educators that work with them make it happen. But it wouldn't happen also if you didn't support it. It just wouldn't. And the reality is these are non-mandates and these are difficult parts of the conversation, but they're mandates to you. They're mandates in this community and they're the types of, of uh, activities and opportunities for kids that make such a difference. And uh, they've required hard conversations and will continue to, but it's because of you over many years saying no this is important in our community this is the type of place that we want to be and the types of ways we want to support our kids i think the look on the faces of the uh, all of the kids but the last group of kids in in singing you know and of course they're a very expressive macapella group and so excited at the end but come on you pure can't joy. beat that that's right. pure joy pure right joy. and, and uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah uh, i know you were planning on at the end doing another performance too and yourself was jumping up like that but but your, your performance as a board is is uh, certainly exemplified by their excitement and the pure joy in their face. So I don't think anything says it better than that last, uh, that last piece from them. However, we'll try. So I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Sangeeta Patel on behalf of the PTSA to come on up and uh, say a few words as well. Well, I, a lot of pressure to go on after the Bible yeah. college. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot play an instrument, nor can I stay. But what I can do is get up here and say thank you very much for everything that you guys do. Brighton would not be the awesome school district that it is without all of you here. Um, I just had a recent graduate that went to college this year, and after six weeks of school, I asked her how it's going, and she said, Mom, Brighton couldn't have prepared me better. She said, I'm surrounded by some of the brightest kids in the world, but I am right there with them. I'm prepared for, for college. I couldn't, couldn't have had a better experience. So. Um, and that, you know, it starts with the school board. So thank you very much. Um, and on behalf of the PTSA, I want to say thank you. And we have made a contribution to the Brighton Food Cupboard um, for $200 on your behalf. So thank, thank you very much. Just a small pleasure. token for our gratitude for everything that you do for us. It's most appreciated. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you to the PTSA and all the folks who volunteer to make that organization such a valuable part of our district throughout each building and all the central work and thank you very much it's a very nice recognition and we do appreciate that so thank you and another essential partner in the district of brain teachers association and judy wagman the president of the bta is here to also speak to you good evening everyone it's such a pleasure to be here uh, uh each year at this time but all the other months uh in between uh, uh equally as important um, my name is Judy Wegman. I'm the president of the Brighton Teachers Association and so thrilled to be able to honor each of our Board of Education uh, members this evening and again uh, every day. And so uh, I'd just like to share uh, that the Brighton Teachers Association, including over 350 nurses, teachers, and academic support instructors on this day, Tuesday, October 15th, 2019, and every day, 
acknowledge and applaud our members of the Brighton Board of Education in your continued efforts and support of our students, faculty, staff, and Brighton families. The Brighton Teachers Association honors your work by making a $100 contribution to the Brighton Education Fund. And it's such a small uh, token of thanks, but what we really want to express to you is our extreme gratitude for the very unique relationship that we have uh, between our association and the Board of Education, the collaborative relationship, the respectful relationship, the forward-thinking, student-focused relationship, uh, really in partnership, uh, and it is very unique uh, to, uh, well, just about any other association and district that I know, and I'm very, very proud to be a part of that, as are all of uh, my members. Thank you for what you do to support us as we can go about the business of supporting our children and our families, and I know we're all in this together. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Judy, on behalf of the board, thank you, uh, not only for your leadership, but for the, to the entire BTA and all of our teaching staff and all that work with our children each and every day. Um, you know, you mentioned uniqueness, and I can tell you from this individual and all of us here, um, board service here is unlike anywhere else. And we wouldn't have it any other way. We love what we do. Uh, we appreciate the recognition. It's statewide recognition. We honor all of those who serve across New York State. But this is a unique place. And it is for all the reasons that have been discussed and that we've seen in action tonight. And we love what we do. The gifts are certainly nice. The donations on our behalf Thank you very much. That we're very well thought out, and and we'll go to great places further beyond. But uh, we just love what we do, and we do it because we love the kids. We love the experience for all of our own kids, and the support of this community for all that we do, and the importance of education and a full and robust education is just really special, and we hope to continue to maintain that that's our goal so thank you and thank you to everyone so uh, two things I'd say one we should start uh, the meeting probably will give people about five minutes for those that aren't staying to take off that does mean the principals they should still stick around <laughs> and uh, we'll start in about five, five, five minutes day. but but I uh, do want to thank the board one more time for our so as uh, we will Folks who do need to leave, uh, go ahead and, and, and exit for this evening. Uh, we will, at this point in time, call the meeting to order. Uh, our regular education meeting for October 15th, 2019. Uh, we be do begin this portion of the meeting with the opportunity for public participation. We've had a lot of participation thus far, but if there are any members of the public that are here in attendance who wish to address the board, on any matter or, or thank us further no I mean any uh, further uh, ish, uh, statements you'd like to make or questions you'd like to ask you're welcome to do so at that time so is there anyone who would like to do that this evening okay seeing that we have no one there uh, board members may we please have a motion for approval of the agenda for this evening so moved second moved by Karen and seconded by Andrea all in favor aye any opposed aye. thank you a motion, please, to approve the minutes from the September 17th, 2019 meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Larry and seconded by Christina. Does anyone have any corrections, additions, deletions to the minutes? Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seems like a long time ago. It does seem, you know, when we get to these three-week breaks, it does seem far too long, doesn't it? But uh, thank you very much. Uh, a motion, please, uh, we'll have some discussion, but a motion, please, for acceptance of our annual financial statements as prepared by the district's external auditors um, through uh, Lou Alimo. So moved. Second. Moved by Marv and seconded by Larry. Uh, prior to tonight's meeting, the audit committee did meet. Uh, the audit committee is uh, comprised of uh, Karen and Larry and I, and we met with uh, a gentleman from Mengel Metzger Bar and Company, Raymond Wager, CPAs, Tom Zuber, and we reviewed uh, the executive summary, the full external audit of the district uh, for the years ended uh, uh, 2019, June, June 30th, 2019, and June 30th, 2018. So we had a review of those documents, and we're, we're asking the board to accept those documents this evening. They sort of are what they are. Um, we did review those in detail. 
Uh, we'll have a full report out from the audit committee at our next meeting uh, in further detail. But tonight we are accepting those financial documents uh, as provided to us by our external auditor. Anything else, Karen or Larry, on that? Nope. I don't. I just appreciate the work that Tom and, and Ray do. They yep. Work hard to make sure that we understand what we're doing. Yep, absolutely. And we, we, we uh, you know, again, uh, our Lou, under Lou's direction, Dahlia Watts, our treasurer, and our financial office, our business office, does top notch work. The outside people that we use, both for external audit, internal audit, and all the things that the advisors that we have financially uh, do great work, report to us regularly, and we appreciate that also. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next up tonight, we're going to bring back Dr. N Dr. Leaner for his annual update on visual and performing arts. Welcome back, sir, and thank you very much to you and all of our teaching staff for putting together the program this evening. It is one of our favorite meetings. It's so wonderful to see all those students and to see the Council Rock students and what must have been the final performance, I guess, on that stage in that auditorium as it existed and all their hands in the air. So we, we thank you again. Well, thank you. And I, again, I'm humbled to be here representing uh, an incredibly dedicated group of uh, music professionals that work with our kids every single day um, to get us to the point where the kids can perform the way they did and it's really just truly a treat uh, to come into work every single day and and uh, work with this team so uh, I want to share with you tonight just a brief recap of the year that we had last year uh, and highlight some things that we tried a little bit differently uh, and also uh, celebrate some of the successes of our students throughout the year uh, in competitions and uh, other opportunities where they had a chance to show what they've learned outside of our uh, school community uh, and then talk a little bit about uh, where we're headed next as a, as a department in visual and performing arts and I'm pleased as I can be to have uh, so many members of the music department uh, with us here tonight uh, it shows the dedication that they have to the work that they do they wanted to be here to uh, make sure um, as, as I got a little bit of advice coming up that I didn't mess this up so I'll do my best, guys, uh, to, uh, to represent the hard work that you do uh, in an appropriate way. So I want to start off with just a little bit about uh, our music season this past year. Uh, as you know, because I see many of you at our events, we, uh, we have about 45 concerts throughout the year in our music department. We, we host uh, two major art shows in-house for our students and several others outside uh, in the community where our students uh, participate. And uh, so I wanted to just highlight a couple things that we did differently this year. Uh, this year, for example, and the, the picture in the upper center is a picture of our BHS Music Fest. Uh, it was an idea that was brought to me by Mr. Struzik uh, this last year to take all of our spring concerts and have them all at once out on the back lawn of the high school. It was a huge success. We had over four hours of uh, music presented uh, by our students. We had food trucks, hundreds of people came with lawn chairs and dogs and just enjoying the evening. And it was really just a fun community event to be a part of. And uh, we're looking forward to hosting that again this year uh, and, and hopefully in the future adding additional groups to that as well. Uh, it, was a, it was a very nice success for our group. Um, that comes right on the heels of uh, the, the junior high school also doing the same thing with uh, a couple of their ensembles uh, on the back lawn of TCMS. So once we saw the outdoor venue worked, we wanted to make sure we took full advantage of that in the springtime. Uh, in addition, we have a couple of very large events, uh, the District Strings concert as well as our Vocal Prism concert that attract hundreds of students. I think we have 450 or so students in each of those uh, ensemble concerts. They present a challenge for us facilities wise. Uh, so this year, not only did we move both of those large events to the gym, we also tried uh, introducing some technology into that uh, work and we live streamed those events. Uh, and we think it was really successful. We got a lot of positive feedback from the community. We had some folks in Brighton that were unable to travel to the, to the event that were able to, to witness it uh, live streamed. And then we also had people writing in thank yous from all over the country where you know, we had extended family that were saying thank you so much for putting these uh, concerts on, online for us so that we can enjoy them. Um, 
and so it was really nice. My parents actually watched from Hawaii, which was really kind of a neat, uh, neat treat for my son. So, uh, so that was uh, that was fun. So, just a few things that we're adding along the way. Uh, we also have uh, the Brighton Community Band, which is in its second year this year. That's faculty, that's staff, that's parents. Uh, joining in on the fun. Uh, Dr. Sarah Fisher Cronice uh, put that together starting last year, uh, and we have uh, quite a lot of folks that are in involved in that. Um, and again, uh, you know, we talk about the best communities for music education. It's an award that is sent to us as a group, but it's really to us as a community. Uh, it's the school, it's the kids, it's families in the community, and it's you as a board of education all supporting the work that we do in the classroom every single day. It's recognized on a national level, um, and it's recognition that Brighton truly is a very, very special place uh, to live, to raise kids, uh, and to work. Uh, and I'm fortunate to do all three of those things. Uh, in the art department, very similar. Uh, we have students that are participating in art shows all across the region. Some of them are juried art shows. Students have to be invited to those. Uh, in order to participate, and others are, you know, all comers bring your, bring your best artwork and share it uh, with the rest of the community. Uh, and that's in addition to the two major art shows that we put on, uh, one in December and, and another one in May uh, for our students. Um, so here are just a few pictures of our student artwork, uh, students working in uh, the art studio. Um, and you'll notice in the upper left hand corner a student working on a one to one device, very similar, uh, actually the same device that you all have. Uh, this last year we've instituted some digital media work in all of our classrooms where students have one to one devices. Uh, and we're really, really, uh, uh, we feel very, very good about the work that they're doing. Students are creating digital artwork. They're also able to archive their artwork using Schoology to create art, digital art portfolios that they can carry with them from year to year so that as students move from eighth to ninth grade, ninth grade studio art teachers can see the work that they did last year by viewing their portfolios. So we're very excited about that work uh, and that's kind of a marriage of my two roles between the arts uh, and the instructional technology. Uh, so that's a picture from uh, Sarah Jesus' uh, classroom uh, they were working on some surrealistic modifications of images uh, in that uh, particular lesson. In the theater area, last year we put on four major productions, three high school productions and a middle school production. Uh, our cast range in size from about 12 in our small play in the spring up to about 70 uh, students on the stage, uh, not to mention the all-student pit orchestra and our all-student tech production crew behind the scenes making it happen. Um, so again, I appreciate seeing many, if not all of you, at, our, uh, at each of these shows supporting the work that the students do. Uh, it's truly remarkable to see uh, what they can do behind the scenes as well as what they're doing on the stage. Um, I'd also like to point out just a couple of things. The Newsies cast this year uh, actually raised money and was able to make a donation to the Center for Youth of over $750 to support the programming at the Center for Youth. That was uh, all came from the students. It was their idea. They saw some parallels between the characters uh, in the musical that they were performing uh, and wanted to make a difference outside of the Brighton community. Uh, it just it's hard not to get choked up when you talk about those kinds of things because that's the goal at the end of the day uh, when we're doing our work. We want our kids to be better people. We want them to be kind and empathetic, and they showed us uh, both of those things um, in that work. And then below that, uh, you can see our technical production crew. Uh, they actually, uh, are for, for the first time this year, we took a trip to SUNY Oswego to help the students make uh, some connections to the technical production program there uh, at the university. Uh, we spent a full day uh, at SUNY Oswego, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the Tech Olympics uh, in a couple of slides uh, where our students really represented our school very well there. Uh, and it was very nice to see that group. Uh, Christopher Schneider leads that team, uh, did a great job organizing uh, that particular day, but also um, you know, all the work that they do in all the productions and all the behind the scenes things that we just don't even know half the time what they're doing. It's just pr it's pretty amazing uh, to see uh, that group. And of course, Summer Arts, what would summer be without Brighton Summer Arts? Our 23rd season, three productions, over 75 students involved. Uh, 
Again, uh, the, the picture in the center is our all student directorial assistant team. These are student directors that took time out of their busy summer to come back and work with younger students. Uh, those are all high school students that come back and do that. Um, our tech production crew that does all the work. And uh, we really thrived this summer in our temporary home at French Road. Uh, it was uh, a challenge for, for the students, um, minimal sets, minimal production value in that particular venue. They made it work and they made it work in a spectacular way. So it was really fun to see them rise to the occasion with that. Um, my sincere hope is that our auditorium will be ready for summer arts this year. Uh, time will tell. Uh, and then we're looking forward in the theater to uh, three productions this year. Uh, we're a little bit challenged with our facilities this year. Uh, our fall production is currently in production. Uh, we're going to be presenting the incomplete works of Shakespeare. Uh, that production is November 1st and 2nd in the TCMS auditorium. Our winter musical is high school musical and that will be presented at French Road. And then our spring musical, you'll notice we don't have a location. I'm hopeful in the BHS auditorium, the Drowsy Chaperone at the end of April. In the community, we like to get our students out there demonstrating what they can do. It's all about the authentic audience for, for our students. They do an amazing job. We don't want to keep them all to ourselves. We try to get, get them farmed out as best as we can. We have a really incredible exchange program uh, between Brighton High School and School of the Arts in the Rochester City School District. Sarah Stabell has uh, spearheaded that. Thank you, Sarah, for all of your work there. It's so much more than the music. It's the relationships that the students forge in that day. Uh, I've been privileged to be part of that uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, in some reasons because I needed to drive the bus, at other times because I just wanted to be there to be part of it. Um, it's truly spectacular to see how students from Brighton and students from the city come together around music uh, and form a partnership and a bond uh, and friendships there. I mentioned earlier our art shows. We have students exhibiting at Nazareth College, RIT, the Brighton Library, um, five by seven show, the Rocco show downtown, uh, and our own exhibits as well. Our students continually uh, make us proud uh, to be part of their education. And I appreciate all the work that the art teachers do uh, to support that work. Um, our Fres bands, uh, the orchestra and the vocal groups travel annually to Frontier Field. Uh, it's an impressive sight to see us herding all of those children out to center field uh, so that they can uh, perform the national anthem in front of uh, capacity crowds always uh, for usually a Tuesday or Wednesday night. Uh, I believe we had, was it 2,300, 1,300? How many tickets did we? 1,500 uh, Brighton community members also attend that as well. Uh, and uh, Debbie Parker is always there later in the fall to collect the award for the largest group uh, to uh, attend a uh, baseball game at Frontier Field to watch our students perform. Our BHS Jazz Band this year performed at both the Rochester International Jazz Fest, uh, which is really quite a treat. Uh, and we're also invited to perform at the New York State uh, Superintendents Convention. Uh, thank you, Dr. McGowan, for uh, making that happen. Uh, truly a treat for the kids uh, to see uh, them perform um, and also to hear the feedback that they get uh, from people around the state. Uh, it's, it's truly appreciated. Um, in the lower center is a picture of our contingent at Tuba Christmas at Eastman Theater. Claire De Felice, uh, as you know, is a euphonium player. And she has motivated kids across the district to be part of this. We now have a problem at French Road. Everybody wants to play tuba and euphonium. <laughs> And you can't have a whole band of tuba and euphonia, uh, but it's very exciting. Kids want to be part of that event. It's quite spectacular to see that at Eastman Theater. The entire stage filled uh, with tubas for that event uh, from around the community. Uh, and I mentioned earlier the TCMS community band, uh, bringing folks in from the community. We talk about having you know, folks for our kids to look up to, uh, and that's one of the things that helps us do that. Um, so appreciate all of that work happening out in the community. Um, and then our students' accomplishments. It's amazing to me how competitive our kids are. It's also amazing to me how humble they are when they compete. 
And this year we had 13 students selected to uh, represent uh, Brighton Central Schools. This is grade six through 12 at our regional art exhibition. This is a juried show. Uh, so you have to be invited to this. Um, we have 13 students. Two of our students uh, received awards. Emma McQuillan and em, uh, Emmy Grosner uh, both received awards from RIT. It means that their work was recognized by the professors and the and faculty and staff there as being extraordinary. Uh, very proud of that entire group. Our BHS tech crew, I mentioned that they went to SUNY Oswego for the first time this year. Uh, Drama Fest is an annual event and we're hoping to go every year. Uh, they just entered the Tech Olympics when we got there and they took first place which was really pretty cool. Uh, Evie Parfit, who graduated last year, uh, was the overall champion uh, in multiple events, and Danielle Maiman, who also graduated last year, won the lighting event. Uh, and overall, the kids uh, came in first. I mentioned earlier the best community uh, being a representation of all of us. To me, uh, a, big, a big statistic here, this bullet point, we, we have over 1,900 students participating in ensemble groups in grades four through 12. These are the groups that in fourth and fifth grade, you get up early and you come to school early uh, to be part of this. And in high school, this is an elective you choose to do year after year after year. That's 1,900 kids uh, out of about 2,700 kids. 71% of our students choose to be part of our programs. That says a lot about them. It says a lot about our community. It says a lot about families that think that music is very, very important. And it's in alignment with all of you. And I appreciate your support uh, as we move forward, uh, support of our programs. Um, it's really something special. And this year, 100% of our fourth graders are participating in either the strings program uh, or our band program uh, through instrumental music at fourth grade. From all of that, we have students that get selected for honor ensembles across the county. 35 of our students. Uh, were selected to represent Brighton schools at junior high all county. 25 per, of our students uh, selected for senior high all county. Uh, and that's both or in all three areas, vocal, uh, strings, and in band instrumental. We have seven students who will be traveling to, well, well traveling to Rochester down the street, <laughs> <laughs> traveling to the Rochester Convention Center to represent uh, BHS. Uh, and three alternates. So a total of 10 students whose solo festival work uh, was at a high enough level to be, to be recognized at the state level uh, by a selection committee. Uh, and then our national orchestra, you saw Jazz Kopp, a part of the Maca, Macapella group uh, that gave the thanks uh, at the very beginning. He's one of two timpanists in the nation to be selected uh, to perform uh, in Florida, in Orlando, Florida at Disney World this November. So they're leaving in a couple of weeks. Uh, they're headed down um, and he's going to be performing with the National Orchestra and that's a very, very prestigious uh, honor. He's quite the player um, and he's recognized and so that, you know, we get him as much bright and gear as we can and get him down there to make sure that uh, everybody knows where he came from. Uh, so we're very excited about that and he's very excited about it too and he's earned it. He's worked very, very hard and he's had some great teaching along the way starting at French Road all the way up uh, through uh, is he a senior this year, Mike? Yes. He's a senior this year, Jess? Yeah. I remember taking him on the seventh grade trip to Washington, D.C. <laughs> um, and uh, so what are we looking forward to? We're looking forward to another exciting year of student performances in the visual and performing arts. We have many concerts, productions, and art shows. Um, we're very much looking forward to the completion of the auditorium uh, this winter, underlying winter. Uh, Got a chance to peek in the back door today and see how things are going. Time spring comes late, just so you know. But everybody's working Thanks. hard. <laughs> RJ said December. I'm going to hold him to it. So, uh, but things are moving along. So it's nice to see that happening, and it's going to be absolutely spectacular when it's done. It's going to make. It's going to create the sound that we want. It's going to be comfortable and accessible for all of our families that come. Uh, to see the events that are there. We're very, very excited about that. Uh, we're hosting the Monroe County Instrumental Solar Festival for like the 400th year, I think, uh, in a row. That's uh, a fun thing to do. You get to see all the kids from all around the county. Um, and uh, last but certainly not least, we're, we're focused on our own professional development as well. Uh, we are 
very, very uh, focused on our work on culturally relevant classrooms and programming, and we want to make sure uh, that we are celebrating the windows, the mirrors, and the sliding glass doors in our arts curriculum. And I think we've shown some examples of each of those things this evening. Uh, we are very interested in continuing to explore the digital media in the fine arts. We're finding fantastic ways for students to create using uh, digital tools as well as traditional tools. Um, we are continuing our work in articulating the essential concepts in the arts, and all of those things are led by our curriculum facilitators, uh, Debbie Parker, Mike Struzik, uh, and Sarah Jezu, and I am forever in their debt for the work that they lead every single day. Um, it's just remarkable to see. So with that, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support. It means a lot uh, to me as a dad. Uh, it means a lot to me as an administrator uh, working with this group uh, in this amazing program. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Wonderful, Mike. Thank you very much, Mike. Thanks for the report out. And, and again, as we've said all night, thank you to everybody. Uh, parents for, like you said, getting kids to French Road early, but uh, lugging instruments and their art supplies and having them practice and be the, where they need to be. But all of our teaching staff who's so devoted and dedicated and the community for supporting the way that we all do. And uh, it's just a special thing and a special place and it's part of what makes a Brighton education a Brighton education. Uh, and as you pointed out, the number of students, the overwhelming majority number of our students participate in some fashion, performing and or visual arts in their careers. So thank you very much for the update. Mike Struzik's back there kind of hiding. Give a wave. The last guy that would want acknowledgement or wave, but he brought the jazz group uh, to Saratoga for that meeting. And I've got to tell you, uh, Mark and Jolene were also there. They crushed it. The The room uh, lit up, and I just could not have been more proud of, of our kids. We were was, all the same way. Yeah, Multiple great. selections, and it was fantastic. Over and, and over and over again, people throughout the day, you know, in, in that particular room, there were 500 superintendents, and there was overflow, and they, uh, all day long, there was actually a superintendent that reached out, I'd like to connect with you guys from a rural part of the state. How do you build a program like that? What do you do? And um, Lots of tweets and retweets. We wanted to recruit Mike, probably, but we're not too happy about that. <laughs> Can't it's have really uh, rural. Yeah. Ex our executive director <laughs> leaned over to him and they started and said, you know, you weren't kidding. These kids are incredible. Are you sure they're not professional? Things like that. It was just such a great moment. I heard another group of kids recently at a, at a meeting, and they were from out of state, and a New York superintendent walked up to me and said, gosh, those kids are, they did a really nice job. And they did, and they were a nice group of kids. This is no offense to them, plus they will never hear this anyways. But I will say to you, he said to me right away, but they weren't your kids. And I thought, you know what, he's exactly right. They were, they were pretty incredible. And it's because of the work that all of you do. So yeah. thanks for that. Thanks. It was great. OK. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate that. A couple of items of business yet this evening to take care of. We have uh, tonight a first read on a policy. Could we have a motion, please, to approve first? First read, Marv is approving. That's OK. First read of policy 7530, students, child abuse, and maltreatment. Moved by Marv. Second. Seconded by Andrea. Uh, this is a policy, and again, I remind folks, policy change is a first read, second read process. Um, when a policy is proposed, it goes through a process internally. It comes to us for a first read, and then it is further evaluated. It is open for question and comment and consideration comes back for a second read and at that point it becomes, if it proved, becomes part of our direct policy. Um, this is a pretty important policy change, rather lengthy, regarding child abuse and maltreatment. And it's entirely due to revisions in the law. Um, a bunch, uh, the law has expanded the applicability of provisions requiring reports of child abuse and requiring greater training for covered reporters and also the definition of an educational setting was amended and the list of reporters who are required to file reports was expanded. So that's the reason for the change. Um, does anyone have anything further this evening or question or comment? Um, <coughs> then all in favor of the first read? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And again, that will be open, further question, comment, and come back for a second uh, read and approval at a later date. 
Uh, we have our consent agenda this evening with a number of, as typical this time of the year, fundraising activities and gifts. A motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Moved by Karen, seconded by Larry. Uh, as I said, a number of uh, fundraising activities and gifts. Uh, all of uh, those are detailed on uh, the agenda on the website, but we do want to make recognition, as is our uh, tradition, um, this is one of the, the times during the year periodically that Brighton Education Fund uh, approves grants uh, to the district and we're pleased to accept tonight grants totaling almost $11,000 from the Brighton Education Fund, including a, a varied list of items and programs that cover all four schools and um, we appreciate those that serve on the board uh, Brighton Education Fund and review all the requests and we especially are appreciative of those who contribute to the Brighton Education Fund to make that happen. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, members of the board, anything further this evening? Matters of business? Just thank you for our, the best meeting of the year. It's, it's always it's fantastic and it's just so wonderful to see all of our kids come and do all the different things that they do and for Mike to report out on all the different activities and how flexible they're being with that construction project and just <laughs> tremendous we really appreciate it dr mcgowan anything else just congratulations to the girls tennis team received uh, late word that they won the sectional championship tonight Yay. oh that's great yeah. congratulations. we are the sectional time of the year that's we true. are yeah. Yeah. thank you very much uh then uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn so moved moved by martha or Martha. <laughs> How you like that? That's been a long time. I was going to say, I combined Larry and Julene both. One of you. Second. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned, everyone. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. 